Hello and welcome to this Silverdor tutorial. In this video, we are going to look at branch components and how they can be configured to create a plant structure. Branch components are one of the fundamental building blocks for plants created in Silverdor. When designing a particular plant, the most effort goes into configuring and combining one or more branch components. If you put a new branch component with default values into Silverdor, it looks something like this. Now let's focus on a small subset of this structure, the area around the root, to understand the basic controls. For that, I'll stop the generation of the branches using the end age attribute. This specifies the age in which the branch generation should stop. Branches naturally split themselves into more branches. They can split less or more frequently into major and minor branches, or they can be balanced. All the attributes for branches are located in the aptly named branching section here. Mastering them covers a big portion of the whole design of the plant. And let's have a look at some more important tools in this section. The most important attribute in this section is branch spacing. It specifies how frequently a branch splits into two more branches, with a distance set in meters. Splitting frequently means creating more dense branching and vice versa. Now let's take a small detour. When it comes to branch spacing, it is good to have a different value for older branches than for younger branches. If you look at a real tree, the spacing between branches is usually much larger for older branches than it is for younger branches. This is a concept we call curves. Next to the branch spacing tool, you'll find two little arrows. You can use them to control how many segments the curve consists of. The higher the values are in the list, the younger the branches they control. You can see exactly what is being controlled by the handy blue highlight on the plant's surface when you hover the mouse over a particular curve value. The mechanism of curves is applied to other attributes, where it makes sense to use them. Another important branching attribute is branch balance. With this, you can control the ratio between the two subbranches. First, we see that splitting can be quite balanced. Then we can use extreme values to increase the primary branch to be more dominant. Now we move on to branch spread. This controls the angle between the subbranches. The last branching attribute we will be looking at is branch length. It simply controls the length of the arc formed during branching. As you can see, you can make the arc shorter or longer in length. The next important area we will be looking at is tropism. Tropism controls have the ability to bend existing branches to any desired direction. The most frequently used tool in this section is phototropism. It lets you decide how much you want the branches to bend upwards. 
This comes in handy if you want to create poplar trees, such as aspens. Negative values do the opposite, and bend the branches downwards, which is good for modelling willow trees. There is quite a rich range of other tropisms, but we won't be covering them in this tutorial. However, each tool in Silverdor has a help function available, which you can access by clicking on the name of the tool. The last important area we will be exploring is random bending. Because branches of trees aren't usually straight, the bending tool gives them a more natural look. There are only two attributes that control random bending. One specifies the length of the individual arc in metres. The second determines how sharp the arc is. Both of these functions are useful when modelling oak trees. All the attributes we have set are valid for the component selected. And again, we use the end age attribute to specify how old the branches should be. We can continue the growth of the tree by adding another branch or leaf to existing branches. This is done by using the end component attribute. In some cases, one branch component alone can represent the entire tree. Another branching system that can be created is where the main branches spawn multiple branches in regular intervals to the side. This is called side branching and can be useful for creating spruces. To display this, let's open one of the templates that uses this kind of branching. So we go to File, New, scroll down and we click on Spruce. Here we go. All the relevant attributes to this type of branching are hidden in the side branch panel. Controlling side branches is more straightforward than regular branching. There are also some similarities. Again, there is a tool which determines the frequency of side branches generated on the tree. You can increase it and decrease it. The side angle tool can be used to control the angle of the side branches in relation to the main branch. The side count tool controls how many branches are spawned at every point. There are a rich set of other controllers that should provide you with enough options to create your desired plant structure. And that's it. If you want to explore branch components further, try playing around with the templates that come with Silverdor. Most of them use branch intensively. And don't forget, if you get stuck, you can use the built-in help feature. Thanks for watching.